Good evening, NASC 102 class. I thought I would introduce you to some new resources that I've put up on your Scholar site. You'll see here this maps to use for forecasting. I've got a list of maps here. Many of these maps, in fact all of these maps, you have seen in previous videos earlier in this course. And as you know, one of the requirements is for you to make forecast throughout the semester, weather forecast. So let's go in here and let's just take a look at this evening and make a forecast. And of course we'll click in on this and click on complete. And you see we have our questions for our weather forecast. We're always forecasting for Des Moines, so do not change what is in that box there. We're going to use Des Moines as our forecasting city. So let's take a look at some of these maps. Let's take a look at the surface map. This is the one that I would suggest that you go to first. And you have seen a surface map before. We've talked about these in previous videos. But look at what's going on over Iowa. Right now we have precipitation in the eastern portion of the state. Part of that is associated with a front. Notice that there's a stationary front. In other words, it's not moving over eastern Iowa. I know it's stationary because of the alternating red and blue. <coughs> Pardon me, I've got a cold that I'm nursing these days. We have a low pressure center and then another rest of the stationary front. So right now, this front is not moving, and so it's just in the southeast corner of Iowa currently. What we're forecasting for tomorrow, is this front going to move? Well, or is it going to sit in the same area? We'll look at other maps. But another map you've seen here is uh, surface temperatures from the University of Illinois. You can go in and animate let's say over the last 24 hours and see how temperatures have changed over Iowa in the last 24 hours. Notice the time here is 21 Z which um, is going to be 4 o'clock so 4 o'clock Thursday afternoon 4 o'clock Thursday afternoon and we'll run it 24 hours into the future and you can see that temperatures drop in the evening hours as we head toward midnight and notice here we're right around 60 and as daytime the afternoon we begin to warm up a little bit but still cooler today than it was yesterday and part of that has to do with the cold front passing and the cloudy and rainy skies that we've had so we can see that we're beginning to cool off we can look at dew point temperature and see how they have changed over the last 24 hours. Now the thing I like about the dew point map is that we know that the lowest temperature, the, the low at 12Z, the temperature at 12Z, which is one of the parameters we're forecasting for, we know that the actual air temperature cannot go lower than the dew point. <coughs> so let's take a look, let's animate this dew point. Notice yesterday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon there's a bullet point of dew point temperatures in the 70s. Let's see how it changed as we went through the evening hours yesterday. Lower dew points moving in 55 and 60 and the lowest dew points were right about 60 degrees dew point temperatures and in fact all day we've been at right about 60 on dew point temperatures. So if I'm forecasting for this evening, and I see over the last few hours, the lowest dew point temperatures, let me stop this. I'm going to go ahead here to the latest time. So 20Z, we subtract five hours because we're in central daylight time still. So that's 15, which would be 3, uh, 3 p.m. local time. 
So at 3 p.m. local time, we have a dew point temperature of 60. So we have 55 here, 60 here. So if I assume the dew points won't go any lower, then the temperature can fall as far as 60 degrees. But what I want to see is if these lower dew points are going to move in as well. But we also have to keep in mind that clouds play a role. In one of the recent uh, assignments that you completed, you successfully told me how at night cloud cover tends to hold in temperatures, warmer temperatures overnight compared to clear evenings. And we'll learn why in chapter 2 when we talk about radiation. So that's the dew point. We can take a look at satellite imagery because one of the things that we have to forecast for is cloud cover. Will there be sufficient cloud cover at 12Z, which is 7 a.m., and 18Z, which is 1 p.m.? Well, you notice over Iowa the last few hours we've had a lot of cloud cover. And in fact, we have a clearing back here into northwestern Kansas and southwestern Nebraska. But again, we're forecasting for tomorrow. Um, so there's that. You also have a radar map. I really like this one. This is big, and you can see how things are moving. Kind of have to move the screen around a little bit. But you see, as we're looking this evening, that there's quite a bit of precipitation across Iowa. But again, notice how the precipitation is moving from the southwest to the northeast. And then you have this precipitation back here in Minnesota and South Dakota. That's moving due east. So down in our area, we would look back here to see if there's any precipitation moving in. In fact, I'm going to see if I can make this screen a little bit smaller so we can get a better idea. So notice that we have precipitation down through Kansas, Oklahoma, and into the panhandle of Texas. All of this is moving east-northeast. Notice that as we go back to the southwest and back to the west, skies begin to clear, or actually precipitation begins to end. So I have to determine that for tomorrow, am I going to have precipitation moving in? The bulk of the precipitation, of course, is moving through today. But that gives me an idea by looking at the radar map whether I think precipitation will end. And notice here that the precipitation, this particular radar goes through 2228Z time, which would be 528 in the afternoon. And so tomorrow we start looking at precipitation. Will it occur from 12Z tomorrow till 12Z the next day? So you have to ask yourself, do you think all of this precipitation is going to move east of Iowa by the time we hit 12Z tomorrow? Remember, we're forecasting for tomorrow. So then we've got this thing called temperature advection up here, a map. And for advection, we're just simply talking the horizontal movement of air. Do we have significant colder weather or colder temperatures moving into Iowa? We see here we have a 55 degree, a 60 degree. The best way to look at this for now until we really dig deeper into temperature advection is that if you, ha if you think a cold front is going to pass through your area, and you've got strong winds, in other words, winds of at least 10 knots, chances are you will have significant cold air advection. In other words, the temperature will drop because of the winds, the strong winds and the cold air. If you don't think a front is going to move through in your forecasting period, then put no advection. But like I said, we'll go into deeper, uh, we'll get into more detail as we progress through the course. <coughs> 850 millibar. So in this particular chart, notice that dew point depression is already calculated for you on this map. So I bring this map up. Remember the 850 millibar uh, 
map is about a mile up into the atmosphere. See if I can make this a little bit larger. So the temperature over at Omaha is 16 degrees Celsius. Recall that everything above the surface is measured in degrees Celsius. And the dew point depression, now normally this is the dew point, but for this particular chart, they went ahead and calculated the dew point depression for you. So in Omaha, they're getting northwest winds and they have a dew point depression of 16, which means the actual dew point temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So there's a 16 degree spread between the actual temperature at 850 and the dew point temperature. So dry air here. We have a dew point depression of 14 here, pretty dry. Notice though, as we get down into this area here, Davenport, Iowa, that is zero, which means that is a dew point depression of zero. In other words, the temperature is 17 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 17 degrees Celsius. So it's moist. Now a really easy way to look at this particular chart, and I like this chart, because it has the relative humidities down here in the bottom right. So the darkest greens are the 90% relative humidity. What you're looking for is at least 80% relative humidity or and higher. But now look at this. And let me get in a little bit closer. Like I said, we're going to have labs that will get into this in more detail. But notice the winds at 850 millibars. We've got a northwest wind here. So it's taking this moist air and it's moving it off to the south. We have a northeast wind here, which is moving this area of moisture off to the southwest. Now we have southwest winds down here, but it's bringing in drier air. So basically what will happen, this plume of moisture that I'm outlining here over southwest Iowa will continue to move off to the east and out of Iowa by looking at these wind directions. So it looks like tomorrow will begin to dry out, at least in terms of moisture. Now another map we can look at is the 700 millibar map. <coughs> now with this particular map, recall that we look for troughs and ridges specifically the isohips pattern at 700 millibars. And so the blue lines are the isohips. And so if you look right through here where I'm outlining, this is the base of the trough. And so from the base of the trough, which is over western North Dakota, South Dakota, into um, western Kansas, down into looks like Colorado. We have the base of the trough here, the apex of the ridge back over here. So in this large area, just off to the west of Iowa, we have upward moving air. Recall to produce precipitation and cloud cover, we need two things. We need very moist air, at least 80% relative humidity, and we look at that at the 850 millibar chart and lifting, which we look at the 700 millibar chart. So this region here is an area this morning, this is from 12Z this morning, was an area of large lift just out to the west of Iowa and was continuing to move to the east. Notice here, over the one of the Great Lakes here, I think it's Lake Michigan, we have another trough. And so there's lifting going on in this area as well. So this morning there was plenty of lift moving through Iowa. We had moisture present. And so that's one of the reasons why we've had precipitation. Now, if you look at, I'm going to go back up here. There's another 850 millibar chart <coughs> where you have to actually calculate dew point depression. So I'll click on this one. And again, this is 850 millibars. And notice this morning, the temperature in Omaha was 16. The dew point temperature was zero, so there was a 16 degree spread. Notice here in Davenport, 
one degree spread between temperature and dew point temperature at 850 millibars. Down in Kansas City, temperature 20, dew point 16, only a four degree spread. So we had an area of moisture, a very thin layer of moisture moving through this morning into Iowa, which has helped to produce the precipitation. Now, as I look back to the north, Notice that we have a 24 degree spread up here in Minneapolis because we have a temperature of 12 degrees Celsius and a dew point temperature of negative 12 degrees Celsius. So dry air back here from the north moving in. We have drier air back here to the southwest also moving in. So we've got dry air moving in from the northwest, dry air moving in from the southwest. So moisture supply should be limited tomorrow. So now I've talked about this 500 millibar map because one of the things that you have to do is to figure out if a cold front is going to actually a cold front, a warm front, or a stationary front, is it going to be in your area uh, for tomorrow? Well, let's go back to the surface map here a moment. I'm going to try to fit both the, sur the surface map and the 500 millibar map. Try to fit both of these in here. Now notice that this cold front, I'm sorry, stationary front over southeastern Iowa, I take that surface front and I put it over southeastern Iowa at 500 millibars. So this is my 500 millibar chart. This is my surface chart. Now what happens at 500 will determine if this front will move or not. Notice that the wind direction is out of the southwest at 500 millibars. Notice the winds are coming from the southwest. So if I look at my surface front over here on the surface map, and I have southwest winds coming, coming in from the southwest, like I'm showing right here, it will tend to push this front off to the east-northeast. So what I'm saying, the stationary front is actually going to turn into a cold front and begin to move east-northeast. Again, I get that because I'm looking at the southwest winds right around where the surface front is at. So I take those 500 millibar winds from the southwest, place them over the surface map, and notice the southwest winds are pushing the front away. We have a trough of lower pressure. It's kind of like a wannabe front, but not quite there. I don't see any other fronts off to the west or northwest that will be impacting. So it should be pretty easy to predict for no fronts for tomorrow. So I already have quite a bit of information to make a forecast with, even though, like I said, we have not done a lot of these labs specifically in terms of the forecasting tools. So let's say a frontal passage by 12Z tomorrow. Well, like I said, I think that front's going to move out of Iowa before tomorrow. Since I don't have a front in the area, I'm not going to have any advection. So no advection for 12Z. Uh, a frontal passage by 18Z. Again, if there's no front at 12Z and I don't have anything coming from the west or northwest, I'll put no front. Um, since I won't have a front in the area, I'll say not significantly impacted by advection. I talked about moisture moving out at 850 millibars. I talked about dry air moving in from the northwest and the southwest. And I don't have a front in the area, so I'll put no for precip. For question 13, we're going to dry out at 850 millibars, so I will not click on this. The frontal position. Uh, I don't think there will be a front in the area by 12Z or 18Z, so I will not click on this. In terms of an unstable atmosphere, 
Now we get into instability in chapter 5, but I'm going to give you kind of a, a little um, something to go on here right now. Typically, our instability, our most unstable time of the year is during the summer when it's really hot at the surface and really cold aloft, in other words, higher up in the atmosphere. It is possible to get an unstable atmosphere during the winter time. It just doesn't happen very often. So for now, until we get into instability a bit more, I'm going to leave that one blank. Now notice I haven't, I have not answered all the questions yet. I just answered the questions on advection, uh, fronts, precip, and the precipitation influences. Now you can have sufficient moisture even if you say no for precipitation occurring, you, you can have significant moisture. So recall, you still have to evaluate each of these parameters in question 13, even though you might say no. So what about 12Z temperature and 18Z temperature? <coughs> well, we can look at this from multiple areas. Let me go back to our... I'm gonna kill some of these browsers here. Make a little room. We'll go back. Um, one thing that we can do for temperatures is that we can forecast for persistence. In other words, what happened today at 12Z will happen tomorrow at 12Z. Same thing for 18Z. But something to keep in mind, you know, we had a front go through earlier today. But let's just check. So this first link here is a three-day weather history at Des Moines. If I click on that, and I have columns here. This first column is for dates. The time, notice the time is in military time, not Z time. So it also has wind speed, cloud cover, I'm sorry, cloud cover is the sky conditions. Visibility, the type of weather that was occurring. Temperature, both the actual temperature and the dew point temperature. Relative humidity, and so on. So at 12Z today, so I'm sitting here on the 18th, Friday the 18th, and I'm forecasting for tomorrow the 19th. I can go back and look at 12Z, which is 7 a.m. this morning. So I would go back to 654, which is six minutes before 7 a.m. And I see that the actual temperature was 65. So I could just put in the temperature of 65 if I think the same thing will happen tomorrow. The... 18Z temperature, which is 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So we're in military time, would be 1254 p.m., six minutes before 1 p.m. Notice that the temperature there was 63. So the 18Z temperature today was slightly cooler than the 12Z temperature today. And that had to do with the cloud cover, and you see we had precipitation almost a quarter of an inch in Des Moines during that six hour period preceding uh, 1 p.m. today. So we could simply do persistence. So we could put in 65 and say that tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 12Z will be 65. And for 18Z we could say tomorrow at 1 p.m. it could be 63. Now, I'm not so crazy about this 65 degree temperature at 12Z because that was before the cold front came through. Also keep in mind that we looked at dew points. So if I can go back up here. I'm going to this map of dew point temperatures and I'm animating the last 24 hours. And notice that the dew point temperatures middle uh, right at 60 is currently over 
central Iowa. So the dew point temperature is 60. Now we do have cloud cover in place right now. So chances that the chance that the actual temperature will fall to the dew point with cloud cover is not good. Typically the temperature will fall to the dew point when you have clear skies and light winds. And we'll learn why in chapter 3 when we get to temperatures. So right now if we looked at persistence we could say 65. The dew point that we see here on the last hour that we have data on which is 20z on Friday which would be five would 15 which would be 3 3 p.m. in the afternoon 60 now what I have to figure out is the 55 and 50 dew point going to move into central Iowa well, if I had a couple of more hours, which I do, as I'm doing this video, it's 622 on a Friday evening. I could wait maybe a couple more hours and then run this again to see if the 55 dew point temperature will make its way into central Iowa. I'm going to go back here a moment. Just see how things are changing. I'm looking back here to see if those cooler dew point temperatures are making its way into Iowa. You know, we've got 50 right there into northwest Iowa. As we go through the day, they begin to retreat. But northwest Iowa, we've got 50, uh, 50 degree dew point temperature. Now, if we assume <coughs> that a 50 to 55 dew point temperature makes it into central Iowa, Let's just take the middle of that, say 53. And then we assume that cloud cover will be maintaining overnight. Then that means the actual temperature can only fall to maybe 58, 57 degrees. So from what we had from persistence, 65, to what we think the temperature could fall to, about 57, we could be somewhere in the middle between 57 and 65. So maybe I lower that 65 a few degrees down. You know, we did have a cold front pass through. So let me take that one down to 60, let's just say 61. So if I put 61 here for a 12Z temperature, anything from 56 to 66 will be marked as correct because it's plus or minus 5. Um, 18Z temperature. If we assume that persistence <coughs> is the way to go, then we would predict 63 for tomorrow. However, keep in mind today we had clouds and we had rain. We now, with the front passing Iowa, and over time the clouds should begin to clear out, We'll have sunshine out. We'll probably have north-northwest winds, though bringing in cooler air. I probably would go a few degrees higher here just because of the rain-cooled air. So let's just go 67, 68. I'll go 68. So that means anything from 63 to 73 will verify as correct. So really the only thing we've got left to forecast for are wind speed, wind direction, uh, also for cloud cover. So let's go back to our maps. Let's look at satellite imagery and let's watch the cloud cover again, see how that's moving. <coughs> so I've got a deep area of cloud cover, although that the most concentrated clouds are moving east of Iowa, east and northeast of Iowa. We still have some trailing cloud cover back here. Clear skies back here. A little bit of cloud cover back here. 
So something else I could look at, and I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, but I want you to get used to using these particular maps. Let's go back up to our surface model. Let's see. Do I not have a surface model on here? I wonder if I can get to it. Bear with me just a moment. What I'm trying to do is get to the University of Illinois weather because they have a really nice station model in place. Oh, let's see if I can find it here. I'll need to put the link in for this. Here we go. And I'll pull up the station model. You'll see why here in a moment I'm pulling this up. So notice we have cloud cover moving off to the east, but if I look back to the west, so I've got 50% cloud cover here in South Dakota, three quarters cloud cover here in Nebraska, 25% here, three quarters here. And then if I look back off to my southwest, again, uh, clear skies. I mean, for the most part, less than a tenth, less than a tenth. Here you've got three-quarter and three-quarter. So as I look at this, it looks like 50 to 75%. As we go further east, or I'm sorry, further west. So I'm trying to get an idea of the cloud cover that's out here, if it will be significant. Recall that the forecasting exercise says that it looks for 75% cloud cover. I think it's the five or six hours before what you're forecasting for. So just to remind you, again, you saw this in one of your labs. If we go back here, so for 18Z, it looks at 15Z, 16Z, and 17Z to 18Z. <coughs> Again, I apologize for the coughing and sneezes. It says if two or more of these times report at least 75% cloud cover, then it says that um, clouds are holding down daytime temperatures. It looked like off to the west when I was looking at station models that um, by the time we hit 18Z, clouds will not be an issue. So for that one, I'm going to put will not affect daytime temperature. So let's see. So now we've got to figure out for 12Z. And for 12Z, it looks at significant cloud cover from 7Z to 12Z, which would be from 2 a.m to 7 a.m. tomorrow, do you think we're going to have significant cloud cover, at least 75%? So here it says three or more hours. If you have at least three or more hours between this time of at least 75% cloud cover, then it will be considered significant cloud cover to affect temperature. So again, I'll go back to this satellite imagery. 
And like I said, I'm sitting here at 6.30 in the evening, Friday night. This stuff's moving through pretty quickly. We begin to see some clearing back here. I'm going to say I think this clear skies, you know, we still got eight hours to go until we get to, to 2Z. I'm sorry, till 7Z, which is 2 a.m. in the morning. I think it's probably assume that it's going to clear out. We'll find out. So I will say it will not be significant. So now I've got my temperature. Cloud cover, no front, no significant advection. 68 for 18Z. So really the only thing I have to figure out now is wind speed and wind direction. Now, wind speed's pretty easy. Recall that in one of the earlier videos that you, view, you viewed this term, if we go back, let's see, if we go back to our surface map and we count isobars, ISO bars are lines of equal pressure, which, by the way, this week you are reading in Chapter 1, so you'll get the formal definition of pressure, which is force per unit area. Notice across Iowa, as of 533 Central um, Daylight Time, we have one ISO bar here in southeast Iowa, one through central and one through northwest. So each of these isobars equate to about five knots. So notice that we've got three isobars across Iowa, which means wind sustained at about 15 knots. But notice that things are moving from west to east here, and the number of isobars begin to decrease. And in fact, these isobars associated with this front, as the front continues to move off to the east, We'll begin to get maybe one isobar here and maybe another one. So at most, 10 knots for tomorrow at 18Z. So if I were to put 7 knots, or let's say 10 knots, anything from, <coughs> anything from 5 to 15 knots would mark as correct. Now, what about wind direction? Well, if we go back to the surface map, we know that winds around high pressure are clockwise. Winds around low pressure are counterclockwise. We have some sort of northerly component of wind. So if I were to leave it at north, that means anything northeast, north, or northwest will be marked as correct. So I think I'm going to leave it there at north. Okay, very important here. Make sure you press the submit button or keep in mind if you don't, then your forecast will not be submitted. So I'm going to press the submit button. If you're not sure, you can go back in and click complete. It still has all of your information there. And in fact, you if you change your mind about wind direction or wind speed or any of these questions before 1159 p.m., you can go back and change and hit submit. Again, it'll only be one forecast for that day, but you can go in and change it multiple times. Okay, I know this has been rather lengthy, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how to use your maps for forecasting. Have a good evening.